The other is computational technologies. The more common name of this, the buzzword that's being thrown around out there is big data. So big data is a big part of our world right now. From a nonprofit philanthropy perspective, let's think about it from two directions. One is from the outside in, and one is from the inside out. From the outside in, all of the issues that nonprofits and philanthropists care about, from job creation to education, healthcare, uh, art and creativity, these spaces are being redefined by other organizations using big data sets. So insurance companies, banks, governments, security firms using these data sets to make new kinds of decisions about who gets insurance, what kind of housing policies are put in place, where public transportation happens. All of those kinds of outside decisions influenced by big data having an impact on how civil society and philanthropy works. So that's one, that's one element. It's, it's pretty abstract. On the other side is how these organizations themselves are starting to use these kinds of tools. Now, think about how a nonprofit financial firm trying to provide loans to low-income entrepreneurs can use the same set of, uh, of tools and opportunities. Now they can collect real-time data on the transactions that those entrepreneurs are engaged in and make much better sense of what's working, what's not working, who's able to pay the loans back, what kind of supports they need, all those kinds of things. So you get a whole new resource into your decision making that's going to be um, of, of a big influence in how this work goes forward. The other thing to keep in mind about this is that big data is not always just spreadsheet information. Some of the big data that makes a big difference is from satellite images or from drones or things like that. So you've got humanitarian organizations on the ground in conflict zones using real-time satellite imagery to help them put their resources where they need to be. That's a total change in how an organization that was there to provide relief could have done its work uh, a generation ago or even a decade ago. And it's raising a lot of important questions about how these organizations are structured, who they get their information from, who they share their information with, and how they use it. So we're really just at the early stages of how we're seeing all of this. I mean, just like every other aspect of life, here's what's happening. The technology is improving at this kind of pace, if this is the x-axis, and our understanding of it is not improving quite that rapidly. <laughs> so there's this incredible gap in opportunity. This is really an opportunity gap. This is a possibility space, if you will. And it's also where we need to be thinking about how we're going to catch up to the technology. Two more comments about, or two different kind of technologies I want to encourage students to think about. One is the role of sensors. So again, these are the things in your phone, the location devices that put a little location tag on everything you do. That information is collected. It can be used in a variety of ways for good and for bad. And we need to be aware of it. Um, it's also changing the way cities operate. Uh, we now have sensors. We have cameras everywhere. We have sensors in the streets. We have sensors in the buildings. Every time you walk in and out of a building, your, your, your uh, passageway through that um, building is being tracked. So again, we have a set of opportunities to think about how we're going to use that information for good. But we also have to think about how, we're, how that information might be used uh, to control us or to limit our options. And that's really where civil society, nonprofits, and philanthropy have played a huge role. If you, the, the conversations happening right now about privacy, freedom of association, freedom of expression, that gets down to what can be done with this information that's being gathered from me and about me that I may not be aware of and that I want to be able to control. Because we as participants in the nonprofit space, that's the area we really care about. That's our ability to operate and act as private people to do something for the public we have to make sure we're making that decision on our own regard and not being sort of manipulated into it or having people track us in a way that we're not aware of. Finally, the, the most interesting thing or one of the most interesting things that's happened and will continue to happen and there's a real opportunity for students going forward is this idea of institutional technology. This is the institutions we're familiar with, the nonprofit organization itself, the foundation, the donor advised fund, all these kinds of structures that were created, many of them 100 years ago, when none of this capacity existed. Now we have these tools. It's time to create new versions of this. And we're seeing this in one degree already with, uh, and we've been seeing this for some time, 
uh, social enterprise and impact investing, impact investing wouldn't be possible without a whole new kind of big data calculation and computation. If we couldn't get the information from the, uh, the enterprises to be able to compare investments in, uh, in across them, we wouldn't be seeing this rise in impact investing. So it's, it's an indirect link, but the institutional technologies, if you think about the norms of new organizations, the governance structures, literally the corporate manifestation of new ways of making change happen, that's this space. And that's what today's students are going to be inventing. So, so that all has its roots in the capacities brought to us by these digital technologies, but it's going to manifest itself in whole new kinds of enterprises for change. There's no reason nonprofits and philanthropy going forward need to look the way it's looked going backwards, right? And it, it's striking. I'm an historian by training, so I love things like decades and centuries. It's, it's not lost on me, at least, that we're at the century mark for the Community Foundation. We're pretty much at the century mark for the private foundation. They're fabulous institutions. They've done important things. They're important parts of our democracies. But going forward, we should be thinking about how to invent, morph, tweak, innovate, whatever Silicon Valley <laughs> word you want to use, this whole new set. That takes advantage of the fact that, for example, people can make a lot of change happen without any institutional structure. We can think about how we use data to track investments in new ways, as well as outcomes in new ways, really we're going to be inventing an organization in which digital data and digital infrastructure is, is as much a part of the DNA of the organization as finance grants program are now when we think about nonprofits and foundations. And that's really cool.